Namaskar, I'm Harpreet Kaur and I welcome you all very warmly to our live and interactive session. You are watching us on e Vidya channel number 10. This particular session is meant for the students of class 10 and the subject that we have taken up today is Geography. Under this subject, we are going to discuss chapter number 4 which is Agriculture. Yes, this is the title of the chapter that we have taken up today. और आपको हम बता दें since it's a live and interactive session तो आप interact कर सकते हैं हमारे guests से experts से कोई भी questions topic से related अगर आपके बन में है तो आप phone कर कर पूछ सकते हैं in case you are unable to call us at the moment तो आप हमें email पर भी अपने questions भेज सकते हैं apart from your feedback and suggestions तो हम आपको सबसे पहले introduce कराते हैं हमारे guests से आज हमारे साथ हैं Dr. Rakesh Arya he is MPhil and PhD in charge of MAP Library from JNU Delhi. Welcome to the session, sir. Namaskar. So, viewers and students, हम आपको बता दें कि अगर आप sir से कोई भी question पूछना चाहते हैं related to the topic, तो आप हमें call कर सकते हैं. Please take down our phone number, which is double eight double zero double four zero double five nine. This is the phone number and you can also send us your questions via email which is dth.class10 at ciet.nic.in and also we would like to inform you that the video of this particular session will be uploaded on YouTube later which you can refer to for your future studying purposes. So, you are live dekh rahe hain aur फिर से सेशन में आगे बढ़ने से पहले मैं आपको बता दूं क्लास 10 के हमारे स्टूडेंट्स के लिए ज्योग्राफी यानी भूगोल हमने ये सब्जेक्ट लिया है जिसमें हम आज जानेंगे चैप्टर नंबर 4 व्हिच इज एग्रीकल्चर दिस इज द टाइटल तो हम आगे बढ़ते हैं और सबसे पहले जो हमारे एक्सपर्ट हैं उनसे मैं ये रिक्वेस्ट करना चाहूंगी सर सबसे पहले एक छोटा सा ब्रीफ आप हमारे साथ शेयर कीजिए व्हाट एग्जैक्टली आर वी गोइंग टू स्टडी इन दिस सेशन ओके Thank you, Harpit Ji. Good afternoon, dear learners. Today, the topic for the online interactive session is on agriculture, class 10th, chapter 4, page number 30 to 39. On lighter note, it is very important to know about the agriculture. Without it, we may have to live like hunters or gatherers. So, the thing is that who can benefit from the class? Anyone who wants to have an overview of Indian agriculture and also the class 10 students. The focus is on interactive live session, it will remain confined to the NCRT class 10th chapter 4 agriculture. Alright and uh, sir this is the brief, thank you so much for sharing it with us. So our students now know what they can look forward to in this session and also our viewers you know. Whosoever is watching us, watching us can benefit from this chapter, from the content that we are going to share for you. So, sir, इससे पहले कि हम chapter का explanation करें, आ, chapter chapter का जो uh, content है वो deliver करें, कुछ ऐसे important terms use किए गए हैं chapter में, which is very important for all of us to understand, especially the students, ताकि chapter में उनकी जो understanding है वो better हो सके. तो so, sir, मैं आपसे request करूँगी कि वो जो कुछ important terms हैं, सबसे पहले हम students को अगर समझा दें तो. Definitely, yes. So, uh, I think uh, for that I need some presentation of my slides. Yes. So, while we study or read this chapter, we come across several terms like tropical, subtropical, physiographic divisions, farming, various temperature, rainfall and soil brackets. Hmm. Once we have clarification on these terms and or the processes, it becomes easy to understand agricultural practices in India. That includes types of farming practices, the reason for such cropping patterns distributed over the space and time like Rabi, Kharif, Jayad. Further, this chapter includes the distribution of various major crops like rice, wheat, millets, pulses, mm -hmm. tea coffee, jute, etc. We will also learn about other non-food crops like rubber and other fiber crops like cotton, jute, natural silk, etc. 
there are some there are also continuous technological and institutional reforms without which the monsoon dependent indian geographical region couldn't have sustained or catered the need of growing population now we will keep on discussing the chapter page wise highlighting the important points so in between i wanted to quote that that millets is a mota naj jisko kehte hain ji with the aim to create awareness and increase production and consumption of millet united nations on the behest of the government of india declared 2023 the international year of millets now the page number 30 31 the contents that starts with agriculture because you know that it is starts with agriculture then again in the chapters comes the farming so there is a bit confusion mm. so to avoid that confusion i have given the definitions that definitely are not given in the book but i have taken from some other sources like agriculture is derived from the latin word agar means field and colo means cultivate when combined the latin agricultura means field or land tillage mm. but nowadays agriculture is a broad terms it includes everything that involves in growing crops and raising animals it also includes the other technologies or genome or something like that that include in the plant or animal sciences and also sir uh, i think agriculture nowadays include allied activities also like yes, food definitely. processing and everything yes definitely yes definitely rp definitely hmm. food processing industries uh the engineering technologies yes. all are the part of agriculture activities yes but when we come to the farming it is an actual tillage basically yeah farming is one part of the agriculture hmm you can say that it's a subset of a agriculture that's right sir it involves cultivating the land and raising livestock hmm farming is a science or function of agriculture which includes cultivating the soil for growing crop and rearing the animal hmm. you know that india is an agriculturally important country yes two third of its population is engaged in the agricultural activities agriculture is a primary activity which produces most of the food that we consume besides food grains it also produces raw material for various industries hmm. now the farming types of farming agriculture is an old age old economic activity in our country over these years cultivation methods have changed significantly depending upon the characteristics of physical environment you know right. the physical environment plays a very important role because it decides where to cultivate yes technological know how technology actually what it does basically it gives another possibilities mm -hmm. to cultivate in the lands which are not which may not be historically in but certain type of crops in the cultivation right sir so technological know how and socio cultural practices mm -hmm. you know that the traditional values or traditional practices are mm. also dominating the agriculture in certain uh, patches of the land mm -hmm. farming varies and subsistence to the farming varies from the subsistence to the commercial type at present in different parts of india the following farming system are practiced so the primitive number one is a primitive subsistence farming the as the name indicates it's a primitive means it's old hmm. subsistence means hame apna kaam chalane ke liye apne, apne parivar ke, ke liye primitive subsistence farming so the question comes here where it could be hmm. can it be in the northern plain where hmm. there is a lot of population density hmm. the answer will be no because hmm. there is a lot of population pressure on a land so the primitive subsistence farming may not be possible there it will be possible in the region where is a very less population is there and a vast area of land is available okay like in the northeastern states like in the state of arunachal pradesh where zooming is practiced hmm. slash and burn we say the slash and burn hmm. 
what happens and uh, it is known by various names and it is given in the books. I am not going to this all these names because it will take a lot of time, but it is known by various names and it is also practiced in various countries also hmm. and their names are different in India also and in various other countries. Okay. Now we come to the intensive subsistence farming means it is subsistence still it is a subsistence farming, but the word intensive has been used. Hmm. What happens that when on a land of patch of land due to maybe due to the inheritance of the land on a patch of land the, 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 uh, the person who survive on that the people who survive on that patch of land increases the lot of there is a need to use technology, there is need to use fertilizers, there is new need to use other methods to increase the productivity like high yield variety can also be used. Hmm. So, what happens that is still it is it is for their family use, hmm. but it is intensive means a lot of technology fertilizers are being used in a small patch of land. Definitely intensive subsistence farming is very much uh, common in the plains of northern India. Uh, so, where there is a lot of pressure on the uh, land. The commercial farming basically uh, is basically for the commercial purpose. We produce for ourselves also, but mainly for selling it to the market. So, it is practice in the those region where the large farms are basically there mm -hmm. and good irrigation facilities are there. So, uh, if uh, there is a lot of reasons means the places where the commercial intensive and substance for primitive farming is there, it is given in the book. So, I will not go to th through that those reasons because it will take a lot of time. So, I will go to the next slide page 32 agriculture that is cropping pattern. Be, the cropping pattern basically tells us that which crops are grown in which season. Hmm. You have studied the physical diversities and plurality of cultures in India. They are also reflected in agricultural practices and cropping pattern in the country. Various types of foods and fiber crops, vegetables and fruits, spices and condiments etcetera constitute some of the important crops grown in the country. India has three cropping season, major three cropping seasons and uh, that are Rabi, Kharif and Jayat. So, there is a diagram in the right side if you see that it is a because you have to understand this according to the months basically. The Rabi season are shown, shown in the winter from October to December and harvested in summer from April to June. Some of the important rabi crops are wheat, barley, peas, gram and mustard. So, if you see in the figure, it is covering uh, many months and the ripening that occurs in the months of basically uh, April, May, June. The khari crops are grown with on the onset of monsoon in different parts of the country. These are harvested in September, October. Important crops during this season are paddy, mage, jowar, bajra, tur, commonly known as arhar, moong, urad, cotton, jute, groundnut and soya beans. Here I need to mention that every crop you know that I in the in every crop has may not be following the exact month for the sowing and being matured. So, it is different. Hmm. In general, it is like that. In between the rabi and kharif crop, there is a short season. If you see, there is a short season that is called jayat basically. Hmm. These are the short season during the month of and known as jayat. Some of the crops produced during the jayats, you may be well aware that watermelon is start coming to the market when it is very dry hmm. and season is there musk melon comes, cucumber, lot of markets flooded with the cu cucumber, vegetables, fodder crops, sugar cane. Mm. Sugar cane actually takes almost a year to grow, it, it is grown in the various season. Mm -hmm. Before going further, I would like how you should, how you like to know that how you should study agriculture because agriculture, India is a vast country, it is a vast, it is a Mediterranean extent. The Tropic of Cancer that is called Kark Rekha crosses almost middle of the country. Hmm. The, the southern south of the Kark Rekha or the Tropic of Cancer is basically 
is called basically tropical region and it is the that the south of india is also being having the maritime climatic influence also hmm. northern india is having the means it is far from the sea so there is no equable climate and definitely it is very cold in winters and very hot in summers hmm. so that is basically a subtropical region so we cannot say that india the tropical and the rabi and kharif crop they may differ due to the reason so before going further it is very important to understand the latitudinal extent of india definitely tropical zone is there and up to approximately 30 degree from the 23 and half degree to the 35 degree it is called subtropical regions south and north hmm. of the of the in both south and southern and northern hemisphere before going to study the agriculture patterns in india one should also be aware of the population density which areas are densely populated and which areas not densely populated because it is a method that scientific method to study agriculture patterns in india so you can see that northern plains are very densely populated and also the coastal areas so now if you go further we can see that and also one has to keep in mind the temperature and rainfall patterns of temperature of january and rainfall patterns of january to january and february because it is very important that which crop it will support that indian continent uh, indian indian region will support in which region it is dependent upon population density definitely it will uh, it will say that whether it's intensive or subsistence culture now the crop suitable re region for the crop growing uh, areas will depend upon the temperature as well as the rainfall so winter rainfall and summer rainfall you will see when you see the maps of various crop growing regions it will correspond to the climatic regions of india now in the in the in the july there is definitely it uh, the temperature uh, temperature and rainfall pattern will change from the january and also from the winters now it should be also understood corresponding with the soil because soil is also very plays a very important role for the agriculture mm. and also the physiographic division where there are plains where there are mountains where there are plateaus where there are uh, soils made by the lava eruptions everything plays a important role because you can see that earlier the sugarcane was very uh, means sugarcane producing major areas were in the uttar pradesh or the northern india now the black soil region also have a lot of sugarcane production so uh, reason is there to be will discuss uh, later on now page 30 to 33 the major crops a variety of major crops variety of food and non food crops are grown in different parts of the country depending upon the variations in soil climate and cultivation practices hmm. major crops grown in india are rice wheat millets pulses tea coffee sugar cane oil seeds cotton and jute rice is the staple food that our majority of population people in india take our country is the second largest producer of rice after china it is the kharif crop kharif crop it is when i say it's kharif crop means it is it is a it is shown in july basically it requires a lot of water it requires high temperature and high humidity with annual rainfall above 100 cm in the areas of less rainfall it is also grows with the help of irrigation and you see that there are major and minor areas and you see that these are major areas in the eastern side and minor areas in the western side right sir so uh, our students can see in the powerpoint presentation itself in the map it has shown that the area for rice cultivation uh, cultivation has grown up significantly mainly mm. because of irrigation facilities and new technological advancements in the field of agriculture yes. so do you think that somewhere after the uh, you know this rice cultivation yes. or of course when we get the produce there is a problem of stubble burning and uh, pollution do you think it yes, is also yes, major yes, cause yes, of concern it is it is it is true it is true you see that earlier the uh, punjab region mm. was not not actually meant for the rice cultivation okay due to increase in the irrigation facilities mm -hmm. irrigation facilities a vast network of canals they are producing the rice right and what is happening that there is a very less time left after 
harvesting the kharif crop that is rice mm -hmm. and and sowing of the rabi crop okay so what happens in the fields of punjab or the western india mm -hmm. uh, the stubble is left and mm -hmm. it is burned mm -hmm. there are several reason for stubble uh, means uh, burning of uh, stubble mm -hmm. one is a entomologist reason that is basically what happens that uh, it is th when the stubble is left in the field it develops certain pest and that is not good for the rabi crops mm. so they they want to burn it and also you can just see that there is a there is a there is a one more reason if you go to the previous slides i will show that there is a wind directions are also there mm. so what happens in the winters or in what is it in the november december the wester the westerly the wind that is coming from western side is called westerlies is start flowing south of the tibet ji and flows from over the punjab and goes to the that is delhi hmm. and the uttar pradesh okay so what happens when there is a burning hmm. it brings certain soots hmm. so that is also there is nox and uh, sox we can say oxides of uh, nitrogen and oxides of uh, uh, sulfur are being uh, 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 are there in the in the in the air. in the air yeah so pollution increases yeah. and that is why i guess delhi is bearing the brunt of yeah. these cold winter yeah. somewhere because There climate a, change is uh, happening I, i wanted to quote <laughs> one of my colleague that is uh, prasenjit is there he is uh, vidyasagar university he has done a very good research in hmm. 2012 uh, that he in according to his research that 20 to 25% residual burning mm -hmm. overall contributed throughout the year Uh, in in the Delhi's pollution basically, mm. and it increases during the October November. Right. So, and people may say that it may it may be why it was not earlier. You mm -hmm. know that now the intensity might have increased, and also over the Delhi mm. there is a high pressure. Mm. So wind is not blown out of the this region. Mm. It subsides there. Yes. So this is also the reason. So government is doing a lot of things to uh, stop that. Yes. Yeah. So we go to the comes next slide. Is I think I am able to answer. Yes, sir. Okay. Sure. Now there's a wheat. Wheat is a second important, most important cereal crops. It is a main food crops in north and north western part of the country. Mm -hmm. This is rabi crop. Requires cool growing season. Cool growing season means you can understand that it will be in the northern India, most of the northern India basically. bright sunshine at the time of ripening it requires 50 to 75 cm of annual rainfall and distributed over the growing season other crops are like millets that includes jowar bajra ragi these are mota anaj jisko kehte the Ji. it is very good source of basically this it has very high nutrition value hmm. for example ragi is very rich in iron calcium and micronutrients okay. and also has roughage hmm. jowar is a third most important food crops with respect to the area of production it is a rain fed mostly grown in the moist areas with hardly needs irrigation i mean so kind of tough crops kehte hain isko unko zyada zarurat nahi hoti hai aaram se kahin bhi ug jate hain dekhbhal ki zarurat kam padti hai major jowar producing states are maharashtra karnataka andhra pradesh and madhya pradesh okay maize i should uh, need to mention the maize it is a crop which used both as food and uh, fodder mm hmm the it is a kharif crop which requires temperature between 21 to 27 degrees and it grows well in old alluvial soil old alluvial means bangar soil type of okay so it, there are reasons so i i will uh, in the this it mainly considered in the northwestern and north india in the areas of madhya pradesh also now we go for the uh, page number 36 37 pulses i have to stick to the time i think so sir we are still left with the uh, few minutes but okay. he, yes in brief so you can explain yeah, definitely the pulses these are grown in both rabi and kharif season hmm. india is the largest producer of as well as ex consumer of pulses these are the major source of protein major pulses are grown in our india are arhar urad moong masoor right. these are actually pulses are except the uh, this arhar other pulses are the leguminous crops means they have the nitrogen fixing fixing, uh, fixing bacteria like rhizobium or the azotobacter bacteria are there in their uh, uh, in their in their roots and they fix the atmospheric nitrogen and they in turn 
helps in enrichment of nitrogen in the soil. Okay. So, they are grown in rotation with the other crops basically. All right, sir. Okay. Fine. Food crops other than uh, other than uh, there are sugar cane is there, oil mm -hmm. seeds are there, mm -hmm. the tea plantation definitely. If I have shown that if you go to the various uh, these uh, food and other non-food crops, you will find that this basically physiographic division and the climatic variations over the India in the winters and summers will explain everything that where that any particular type of food and non-food crop should be grown. Okay. Now, we come to the page 37, 38 that coffee definitely coffee uh, is brought by the uh, in India it was it, it is it is uh, it is grown in the Baba uh, initially it was grown in the Baba Budan hills in the in the state of uh, Karnataka mm -hmm. now it is it still is confined in the Karnataka Kerala and Tamil Nadu mm. in horticulture means you can understand that fruit and vegetables it is mainly it is had it is also having uh, you know the horticulture and now the concept of floriculture is also there yes you know that with uh, around the big cities the requirement of the, the flowers is much bangalore mm -hmm. is a main hub the, for the floricultures yes. and the east western up meerut muzaffarpur a lot of flowers comes from that region mm -hmm. the horticulture floricultures definitely and it also all these cultures or whatever we produce fruits and vegetables definitely requires a proper proper climatic conditions like mangoes are grown in the mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the uttar pradesh and uh, these are various reasons that I will explain, it will take time. Right. There are various non-food crops like rubber, fiber crops, cottons are there. And every, every crop has definitely has certain soils and certain, yes. certain uh, climatic condition. Now, I will finish with the 38, 39. There are certain andolans were there like mm -hmm. uh, Bhudan or Grandan uh, uh, andolan were there. Definitely, it was for that, for giving the land to those people who are landless basically it was uh, it was uh, it was carried forward by by the vinaba bhave the technological reforms i should like to mention in one minute i think yes sir. so uh, agriculture which provides livelihood for more than 60 percent of the population needs some serious and uh, serious technical and institutional reforms the civil the cultivation and consolidation of land holdings mm. you know that with the advent of the modern technology like remote sensing and gis a lot of lot of uh, predictive models, uh, right, precision sir. agriculture, all these have uh, taken place. Absolutely, so, yeah. sir. So, because we are running short of time, yeah. we have to wind it up here. Sure. But I am sure whatever you have taught us uh, during the session, the students will definitely get benefit from the same. Thank you so much, Thank sir, you. for your time and Thank for your you, contribution sir. to the session. Thank you. So, viewers and students, it's time for me to wrap up the session. But before uh, we do that, here is an important announcement. And, uh, you know, it's actually for all of us. So, CIET NCERT is very happy to announce the All India Children's Educational E-Content Competition for this year. So, if you are a teacher, teacher educator, student or independent educational e-content creator, we invite you to send in your best e-content for the competition. For more details and the registration form, you can visit the activity section of our official website www.ciet.ncert.gov.in or you can scan the QR code on the screen. The last date for sending your entry is 20th of January 2024. With this, it's a wrap. This is me, Harpreet Kaur, taking leave of you. But please stay tuned for our next live and interactive session under the subject Mathematics titled Statistics Part 1. Yes, it is Statistics Part 1. Thank you. Namaskar.